Halloween is right around the corner. And as with, well, pretty much everything since I became a father of two, I am woefully unprepared. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you how I 3D printed this entire cosplay helmet in one solid piece plus the back clasp on a resin 3D printer in under four hours. Let's get after it. So I've had a lot of large printers for a while now. My third printer was actually a CR10 V3. I have the Comgro T500, my Voron 2.4 350mm, and now the Anycubic Cobra 2 Max. And while I've always been intrigued by other people printing helmets and cosplay, I've never actually tried any of it myself. Now the main reason for this is honestly just the time it takes and the sheer amount of supports you have to print to actually make it work. I mean, to print this thing on a slower printer like a CR10 would take pretty much a full week. And even on my Voron, which is a lot faster, you're looking at almost three days. Plus, there's the kilo or so of support material. You guys know me by now, and if there are two things that I hate, it's waiting and supports. And while printers have become much, much more reliable in the last few years, I get super nervous about week-long prints, especially ones with so many fine details, because it is such a tragedy when you waste a kilo of filament on a failed print. But this year, my eldest son is finally old enough to actually care about Halloween, and he's super into Marvel, at least Spider-Man, in case you haven't noticed from many of my recent videos. Now, I'll be honest, I usually hate dressing up. It's so wasteful. As I grew older and stores like Spirit started popping up, quite literally, I noticed that the majority of Halloween became about single-use, disposable, plastic garbage that ends up in the landfill every single year. That's why this year, I instead decided to make my own costume and to make one that's sturdy enough and rugged enough to last for years. Something a little higher quality than the junk that you get at these pop-up stores. At least as high quality as my skills and historically shoddy workmanship would permit. So here's how I did it. First, I needed to find a mask or helmet that I liked. And this was actually tougher than you might think. See, I'm super happy to pay for models, but I don't have time to deal with things like servo motors and wiring LEDs and all of that. In other words, no Iron Man. Ain't nobody got time for that. Plus, it seems to me like a lot of the costumes that I found were Star Wars, and I've never really been able to get into all of that. I also wanted to find something that was going to really take advantage of a new large format resin printer that was sent to me specifically for this project, hashtag sponsored, the Apex Maker X1, which meant finding something with a lot of very fine detail. Now that ruled out plain helmets like Batman and so on. Finally, after some searching around, I settled in on this amazing high quality and free model of Black Panther by Official 3D. Now it was time to figure out my head size. As I mentioned before, I've never printed out a helmet before, not even on my FDM printer. So this was all new to me as it might be to you. And I had no idea what my head size was. For the uninitiated, one of the problems with printing out a helmet, as I understand it, is that you can't just take a tape measure and measure the circumference of your head, even if you have normal human hair, which I don't. That's because heads are not perfect spheres, they're actually oblong, and you risk your nose or your chin getting stuck and not getting into the helmet, for example. So I figured, I have a bunch of 3D scanners, why not give those a try? I tried to scan my head first with the Revo Point Mini, but to no avail. The biggest problem here was that most of my head, as you can see, is covered by hair, either the hair on top of my head or my beard, and scanners really don't like that and I certainly didn't want to relive the dry shampoo ordeal that I did for my 3D scanner shootout video. I honestly think I'm still picking that stuff out of my roots. So after that failed attempt, I then tried the 3D Maker Pro Mole Scanner, which I recently had a lot more luck with in combination with my favorite thing ever, a beanie, but I still wasn't getting the results that I wanted. I think honestly, part of it was that my assistants, my mom and dad who were visiting from out of town, were not so experienced with 3D scanners. But also, scanning a human head with a consumer grade scanner is like really hard. 
First of all, you lose tracking if your subject blinks or talks, and the wires tend to wrap around the subject's neck as you go around and rotate. By the way, fortunately, RevoPoint is actually going to be sending me a wireless scanner for review soon, and they claim that it's going to be a category shifter. I don't know, but make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that. So after wasting an hour or more with various 3D scanners, I decided to look to Uncle Jesse, who has tons of experience printing helmets, and I was not disappointed. I honestly never am when I look at his channel. I downloaded his amazing and free cosplay caliper model and printed it and then went about measuring my dome. Now that was easy enough, but I soon found another big problem, or at least I thought it was a problem. When I scaled the helmet to the size that I thought I would need for my head, it didn't fit on the build plate, even though the Apex Maker does have a massive 16 inch build plate. Every time, no matter how I rearranged it, the ears would poke out. At this point, guys, I was super frustrated. I'd done one other big, cool print with the printer just to try it out, but it was actually the one that is provided on the USB thumb drive. I still had no Halloween costume, no video for you guys this week, and no project to share with Apex Maker as a thanks for sending me this printer. Really frustrating. Fortunately, I decided to try my luck and scale the helmet to the maximum size that would fit on the build plate. As you guys probably know, I have pretty limited experience when it comes to resin. The folks over at Chitu Box were kind enough to give me a free pro subscription to play around with, but personally, I didn't really get along with the software too much on my Apple Silicon Mac, which you guys know is a pretty common theme on this channel. And if I'm honest, this helmet was so incredibly detailed that it crashed the software every single time I tried to automatically generate supports. And no, there was no way that I was taking the time to manually support all these fine details. So instead, I downloaded the free version of Lychee Slicer, which seems to work much better on Apple Silicon. And to my great pleasure, the auto-generated support seemed to work a whole lot better too. Even though Lychee isn't the default recommended slicer for this printer, they had a ready to use profile all set up and all I needed to do is copy over the settings for this particular high speed brand of resin that was provided to me from the Chitu Box profiles. From there, I was off to the races. Quite literally, given that this printer can print 180 millimeters per second, and honestly, despite me making some big beginner mistakes such as using too thin supports and not securing things to the build plate quite enough, the mask printed really, really well. Because of those mistakes, I do have some gashes here on the side of the mask, but I actually had to go back and check if those were in the original model or not, because they literally look like battle scars that are meant to be on the side of the mask, and I kind of love them. The entire helmet, which by the way is solid, not hollowed in any way, printed out in, get this, three hours and 40 minutes. That's insane to me. And it really makes me wonder if the availability of bigger printers like the X1 is going to be a game changer for the cosplay community. Obviously, there are some concerns about making resin skin safe, as I'll cover in a minute. But I think the extra work in post-processing or varnishing it can be worth it to compress down a week's print time to just under four hours. But now it's confession time. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Before printing this helmet, I left a very small piece of resin in the vat while cleaning it between prints, thinking that it honestly wouldn't matter too much because it was a tiny flat little piece in the corner. And that was a huge mistake. It actually ended up puncturing the NFEP, but boy, let me tell you that at this point, I was really glad that I'd been experimenting with air quality improvements in the prior week's video, because four liters of resin leaking everywhere is not easy to deal with air quality wise. Replacing the NFEP was easy enough, and I was super, super glad that Apex Maker provided all kinds of extra screen protectors, NFEPs, and perimeter cover vinyl, but in my rush to get the mask done in time for this video and the deadline associated with it, I figured that I would just clean around the vat as resin leaked out so that I could actually let my print finish. I honestly knew this was really, really stupid and that I was taking a huge risk, but I did it anyways. And yeah, now the screen is dead. But I 
do want to say that this was 100% user error combined with downright rushed carelessness, and I don't think that it should reflect negatively on the Apex Maker X1. It is a Kickstarter though, so if I could make one big recommendation to the Apex Maker team for before they scale up production, I would say that with a VAT this large, it might be a very good idea to actually seal the edges of the screen with something like silicone, the kind of silicone that they use to seal, say, bathtubs instead of this removable vinyl sticker that they provide because that thing was absolutely useless in stopping the leaking resin from getting under the screen and even the replacement one wrinkled up after I installed it even though I had fixed the leak probably from the resin that was already under the screen. I think that silicone would do a much better job protecting the printer screen. Plus, if people needed to remove and reapply it later, they could easily do that with the provided scraper and perhaps Apex Maker could provide a vinyl template to protect the screen while you apply the silicone to the perimeters. Anyways, in order to actually finish this project, I positioned my tail firmly between my legs and printed out the backside of the mask on another resin printer. It then proceeded to fail twice. Don't judge me, okay? I don't know if you've noticed, but this helmet is freaking massive, and it actually wouldn't fit in any other wash and cure station on the market, so I was super grateful that Anycubic sent me over their new wash and cure max. Now this thing is pretty slick, and it washes the model first with IPA, then with water before curing it. It does all of that with just two clicks, one to set the auto mode and the other to actually start the program. Though, as you can clearly see, I think I didn't position this model particularly well in there because parts of it discolored likely due to the fact that they didn't actually get hit properly with the IPA before the water bath came in. Fortunately, I was always planning to paint the model anyways. My next step then was to cure the mask. And don't worry, I cured both the inside and the outside for more than 30 minutes in the blazing hot Tel Avivian sun after the original curing program. Now you might be wondering, why does it matter? After all, I said earlier that I wasn't able to scale the entire model up to fit my head based on my measurements with the cosplay calipers. Well, good news, the first good news of this video actually. I made a beginner's mistake there as well because once I printed it out and cured it, I actually decided to try and squeeze it onto my head and it was actually a little bit bigger than I needed, probably because of the angle that it goes on the head. So at least that was a win, even if it wasn't an intentional win. I still don't plan on wearing this thing for a very long time, but I definitely don't want uncured resin leaching through the micro cracks between the layers and into my face, eyes, or lungs, because apparently that's a thing. From there, I decided to just hit the entire mask front and back with a quick rattle can of matte black paint. I know that this is probably sacrilege to the people who spend days or even weeks hand painting, detailing, and then dirtying their cosplay creations to look realistic, but I honestly don't have the time this week or in general because the kids are out of daycare for the holidays and my parents are, like I said, visiting from the States. Plus, I figure I can always sand the back of the mask and repaint the entire thing with cool silver accents and a nice pearlescent black later if I decide to. So there you have it, a fully 3D printed one piece cosplay helmet done entirely on a resin 3D printer. Like I said, my knowledge of cosplay is basically zero and this was just a fun little project to level up and practice my own resin skills. But honestly, I think that this thing is completely badass. And because it's made of solid resin rather than some garbage single use plastic shell, it's something that I can enjoy for years as a display piece or as a helmet that I can wear to any costume party I want. But hey, I'd love to know what you thought of this project in the comments below. And also, would you like to see more projects like this in the future? Once again, I wanna give a huge thanks to Apex Maker for sponsoring this video and for sending over the X1, which although this was not a review video, I can genuinely say was a pleasure to work with, packed with some serious performance and a huge build volume and it was blazingly fast. If you're interested in a big, fast, well-built resin 3D printer, I'll leave a link to their Kickstarter campaign below so you can check it out. 
Just remember that as with all Kickstarters, you buy at your own risk, and I have no way of guaranteeing that it will be delivered on time or that the machine you get will match the one that I used in this video. Also, if you do decide to back this printer, just maybe don't keep it running while it's leaking resin. I'm gonna go see how I can maybe hopefully fix this thing because I really would love to keep using it. So that's all for this week, but I'll see all of you on the next layer.